Good afternoon. I'd like to thank Professor uh, Sinali for giving uh, this opportunity to speak on avoiding complications, uh, or tips and tricks to avoid complications in endoscopic uh, third ventricular stomy. Endoscopic third ventricular is a common procedure which is done and uh, the many complications has been described uh, um, by different people. The, that is one of the uh, popular publications from Prof. Drake. Then he, he published that, that uh, the commonest complication is CSF leak followed by meningitis and hemorrhage, hypothalamic canal of injury, seizures, and, and uh, is almost of equal incidence. Now, how do we take care to avoid all these complications? The first step to avoid this complication is to do a proper study of the pre-op imaging. Look for the size of the foramen of Monroe, diameter of the third ventricle, and the premontane space. And if pre-op uh, planning is done properly, one can avoid a lot of complications. Like this patient was referred for an endoscopic third ventriculostomy and a biopsy, one can see that the foramen monroe is very narrow. If, if one does a third ventricle, then there's chances of damage to the phonics as well as bleeding from the ep 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 veins around the phonics. The, uh, the minimum diameter of the lateral uh, third, the transverse diameter of the lateral ventricle should be at least six millimeter or eight millimeter, as our endoscope uh, diameter is almost six mm. So, if one does a third ventricle, uh, third ventricle when the diameter of the third ventricle is less than that, there is chance of damage to the lateral wall of third ventricle, hypothalamic damage, and as bleeding. So, one has to study the diameter. This also. Similarly, what is important is to look at the this the adequacy of the prepondent space like in this patient of a fourth ventricle outlet obstruction this though uh, endoscopic third ventricle for me is it been would have been ideal but there is hardly any space between in the prepondent space so if one does in this case there are chances that we can damage the visitor artery so this is again not a good case or one has to take special precautions to avoid basilar artery if one plans a third ventricle ostomy in this case the most commonest complication is damage to the phonics, though clinically relevant is only in less than one person. One has to do take a lot of precautions to avoid the phonics or uh, damage to the phonics in when planning a third ventriculostomy. In addition to looking at the size of the foramen of Monroe, uh, one also has to do a proper planning of the trajectory like this. If uh, if one uh, one cannot use a standard cocker point to do a third ventriculostomy, as the the third ventricle size differs in uh, patients with uh, hydrocephalus, patients of craniosynthesis having having hydrocephalus in infants and adults is different. So always plan, customize your burrow depending on the present of the third ventriculostomy. So uh, if it, there is a, uh, so draw a line from the dorsum cellae to the center of the foramen monroe, project it in the vertex, and that is the place where burrow has to be planned. One can decide, uh, measure the distance from the nasion or if one uses in navigation, then it's not, not a problem. And if one uh, does not do a proper trajectory, then one can cause, uh, if it's too, uh, too anterior, it can cause uh, damage to the uh, phonics, damage to the brainstem. If it's too posterior, one can do damage to the hypotetary hypothalamic axis. If one is planning third ventriculostomy plus uh, uh, biopsy uh, of the posterior third ventricular lesion, and then it's better to do uh, again plan the trajectory and do two burrow if one is planning to work with a digit endoscope only. If one is using a uh, flexible, one can use one burrow, but if it, uh, with a digit endoscope, it's better to plan two burrows, like this case. Now, what are the precautions? So, if, if the parallel uh, trajectory is done proper, so as soon as you place your endoscope into the ventricle, you'll first thing to see is the foramen of Monroe. And here is the septal vein, and here's the thalamocardic vein, and this is the phonix. One then enters the third ventricle, look at the, both the mammillary bodies, you can see the basilar artery here, and this is the thin membrane or the premammillary space. One can make a hole in, in the premammillary space. The, but there is one caution that one should not inflate the balloon uh, at this level as because one inflates the balloon there, 
there can be stretching of the hype uh, of the perforators from the basilar artery. So it's always better to lift. What I'm trying to do is to lift the floor of the third ventricle into the cavity of the third ventricle. And then I will do the balloon dilatation inside the cavity of the third ventricle to avoid stretching of the hypothalamic of the basilar artery perforators. So I just do a minimal uh, inflation and then try to lift the floor of the third ventricle into the cavity of the third ventricle. So I'm just lifting it. Yeah, I, yeah, I, 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 and then do a progressive dilatation and keep, keep the inflated balloon for one or two minutes to achieve hemostasis. At this point of time, if that can be bradycardia, if there's bradycardia, one has to deflate it. So I can see here, I'm, this is the, I'm, I'm uh, inflating in the cavity of the third ventricle rather than in the below, the, in, in the prefontine system. And, and then once you deflate, do not immediately remove, keep the, uh, keep the fogati there if there is any bleeding from any margin, one can again reinflate to look for to stop the bleeding. And at the end of it, look for the bare basilar artery. If there's a second membrane, one has to remove because one has to see the success of it to be depending is depends on the on visualization of the bare basilar artery. The other complication is interventricular bleeding due to subependymal vein injury. Subependymal vein, in, uh, to avoid subependymal injury, uh, the, the prescribed method is to use a, uh, use a um, peel away seat so that uh, it helps in multiple passes as well as helps in subependymal bleeding. Uh, one, one should particularly avoid endoscopy with the sharp edges to avoid subependymal bleeding, but uh, and peel away seeds whenever it's available. One should do and one the patient can afford because it's hundred, two hundred dollars. Uh, in a setup like ours, where we try to do a lot of cost cutting, so we use a brain cannula with a glove, uh, with a, the cut finger, uh, the the glove cut tied on it, and then you inflate syringe to to use as a hemostatic and agent. And a peel away and, and a sheath like thing. So use the brain cannula and create that trajectory that create an, uh, an uh, atraumatic or a, uh, a trajectory which is um, already hemostasis has achieved. And if there is any inadvertent in, uh, suburban bleeding, that will stop by keeping the inflated uh, balloon for two minutes. And once you do that, while introducing the scope, one has to do a continuous irrigation with saline. When you do a continuous irrigation, it keeps, oh, keeps the tract open for multiple passes. So one will not dam damage any multiple times. Like this, you can see here, very clean uh, tract. And when you keep continuous irrigation, it, keep, it remains open and can go in and out multiple times and you don't need a peel away sheath. The fourth most common complication is, is when, you, when you do the third ventriclostomy. The complications happen if if, if it's not transparent and if the floor of third ventricle is very thick and one cannot see the structures that is in opaque opaque third ventricle or when a thick membrane it when when you try to uh, do a puncture that causes traction on the lateral wall of the ventricle and causes the hypothalamic and the uh, hypothalamic nuclei damage now this opacity has to be predicted before by doing a contrast mr especially in a hydrocephalus due to shunt malfunction or a post meningitis hydrocephalus, if one does a contrast MR, then one can predict the opacity before. And if there is an opacity, one can avoid a third ventriclostomy or at least have instruments to tackle uh, uh, how to do when you find a thick membrane, like laser or sharp instruments and scissors to do the cut. Now, like this case, which, which had a, a very thick membrane during surgery, so the best place to make the perforation is to feel the dorsum cellae and either use a scissor or a laser or a monopolar or a bipolar to incise on the dorsum cellae so to avoid the basilar artery because, because it's opaque and you do not see the basilar artery here. 
The other company when you use multiple instruments do not introduce the instrument when your scope is in the third ventricle as the first the initial few minutes of the instrument is blind to scope so always come back into the lateral ventricle we introduce all your instruments in when the scope is in the lateral ventricle so that inadvertent injury is avoided to the ependymal veins so in this case we used a laser laser is quite useful in thick membrane we identified the dorsum and and incised the floor along along the dorsum and once that is done and then fogarty was used to dilate it and at the end the bare basilar artery was seen and that is the end of the procedure but in spite of taking all precautions sometimes we land up with vascular injury uh, or when we have a wrong indication like this is inadequate space the basilar artery hardly there is any space and this was one of the uh, one case was done in 2014 8 years ago and uh, and this is what happened uh, while uh, while deflating the balloon so that in a, a i was not had a sudden bleeding so is not bringing the floor of third ventricle into the cavity of third ventricle but what is important is never uh, when you deflate never uh, never be in a hurry to take out the fogarty uh, when you deflate slowly watch for it keep it till you see that it doesn't bleed because i had not removed so i could again inflate the fogarty and achieve hemostasis and i had to keep it for almost half an hour to achieve check multiple times and once i uh, half an hour stop then i could remove it uh, some point of time i was thinking that i should leave the inflated fogarty and come out but fortunately it stops so more important is to avoid dilating in uh, in the prepondent system and then do not uh, do not be in a hurry to remove the fogarty catheter keep it in that place so that in emergency situation like that one can inflate and achieve hemostasis otherwise it is there is no way one can achieve hemostasis in 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 complications like this so if if it is to avoid basilar artery injury one has to avoid sharp tears of the endoscope or uh, sharp uh, tips of the um, sheath and 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 if if it's a uh, if, if it's a opaque one always always make uh, the incision on the dorsum dorsum cellule if you predict before that it's a thick membrane like the supracellular this case supracellular arachnoid cyst we had expected we wanted to do a cyst of ventriculostomy and and a cyst of uh, cystonostomy but we expected that it will flow through it will be thick so we did an mr angio and integrated with navigation during surgery one has a doppler one can always use a doppler we don't have a doppler but we we integrated with a mr angio the other common complications hypothalamic damage in hypothalamic damage usually happens because of a, when we do traction on the floor of third ventricle if it is an opaque membrane and we use a blunt instrument that causes a traction on the lateral wall of the ventricle and in turn this nuclei gets damaged and we can have diabetes insipidus or obesity uh, in these cases so always use sharp instrument or a laser if you have a thick floor so that the floor of third ventricle is the is not moved or traction can be avoided the fourth final the complication the success of etv the co complication if the success of etv it depends on uh, if the second membrane is perfect or not and use multiple strategies suppose if to do an accurate to plastic if it is feasible because mm -hmm. sometimes the third ventricle stoma can get close Uh, as we understand that uh, the the leakage membrane has 
two membrane, a diencephalic and a mesencephalic membrane. So if one makes a hole here, is not communicating the prefrontal and it may not work here. So if one enters this place, one has to make a second uh, purpose in the second membrane, in this membrane also, both the mesencephalic and diencephalic and the mesencephalic membrane. Uh, which were published long ago in 2000, that one has to understand this anatomy to do a, a perforation of the second membrane, uh, like this case. This patient had a uh, small aqueduct also. So uh, after doing the third interclastomy, we still found second membrane did not see the bare vessels so we had to do with a use this is using laser to to inside the second membrane and then we added aqueductoplasty also The final complications common is the CSF leak, and CSF leak incidence is almost for, varies from 1.6 to 4.4%. Uh, now, in this paper published uh, uh, in 2007, uh, they said that uh, using a pericranium, pedicle pericranium, plugging the cortex helps in reducing CSF leak, and we have been using also this technique, and it has helped us in reducing our CSF leak quite uh, to quite uh, to almost zero in in specific indication to reduce complication one can use navigation especially when you have a narrow corner monro or asymmetric skull and ventricle or using supercell arachnoid cyst when when the floor of the ventricle is thick or multilocular hydrocephalus or when you have small ventricle one can use a navigation to reduce complications in conclusions complications can be reduced if pre-op interpretation of mri is done properly if one takes intra precautions and use of navigation whenever indicated. Thank you for your attention.